welcome to the inaugural episode of EETV. My name is Mark Alexander, president of Efficient Exercise, and I wanted to make a quick introduction for who's a part of this first episode. Uh, to my right here is Skylar Tanner. Hi. And uh, I run our Westlake facility, which we're at right now. You can't tell, we've got a tarp. Uh, and to my right, monopolizing the view, is Keith Norris here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Keith Norris, uh, Rosedale studio manager and sometimes uh, downtown manager, well not manager, um, studio occupant. There we go. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah. So when I talk about Keith, now you have a face, yes. a name, and yeah. if you never met Mark, now you know. Yeah, when I, say I Mark. am sometimes faceless. <laughs> <laughs> but he does have the smoothest voice in fitness. Uh, we're neck and neck. <laughs> uh, we, we wanted to take you. So yeah, that. We, we, we need to find a way to make money off of the, the voice. If anybody out there wants audio training to broadcast, like a podcast, we, we are happy to accept <laughs> offers to tell you to push smooth. Yes. Wait yeah. for the turnaround. Things of that nature. Yeah. 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 We're, we're happy. We're, we'll we're happy here. Take it. We're, we're here. here for you. Um, I guess just a quick bio, maybe, of, of, of everyone. Skylar, you want to go first? Just sure. kind of give your history sure. here. Yeah. Sure, sure. So um, I, I got into this because of uh, I had an old coach. He became my coach. He was a former Marine, and he won national championships in Mexico with the football squads at the American High School. And he kind of sounded like this. And he, he said to me when he would train me that someday uh, he might make me a trainer. And then I got certified as a trainer at 17. He said, I never thought you'd actually become a trainer. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, came here about seven years ago to when Mark was opening the Westlake facility. And, you know, love it here in Austin. Been here ever since. Yeah. yeah. And Keith, uh, a little bit of your background. Yeah, a little bit of background. Um, interested in sports my entire life. I've been playing football since... Uh, about that tall, had to hold the football up and down. Um, one of those kids. Um, Bruce Lee movies led into um, uh, the first Rocky, which I'm really, really dating myself, but that really got me into training super hard. Um, have always uh, been a good athlete, but not a great athlete, and had to train super hard to hang with the great athletes. Um, and so that that's how I that's how I got into this. That's how I became very, very interested in it. Um, and uh, from that, obviously, if you throw a, a tad bit of intelligence in there, I'm not saying I'm the most intelligent guy <laughs> everywhere, but I've got enough to be dangerous. <laughs> um, so that led to voracious reading and uh, trying to suck up and gain all the knowledge I could about training. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I was just lucky enough to be around uh, some of the best gyms in, mm -hmm. uh, in San Antonio. Um, Stayed involved in athletics. I uh, went to, again, dating myself, Southwest Texas State. <laughs> uh, played football there. Um, it was still that when I moved here, so it wasn't that long ago. So you graduated 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, uh, quickly from that, uh, went into the military after college. Um, long time in the military. Went into the pharmaceutical industry after that. Um, maintained my interest in strength and conditioning and personal training and uh, physical culture mm -hmm. and uh, was lucky enough back in September to hook up with Mark through Skylar yeah. and have turned my dream into uh, of personal training and turning this into a an actual money-making venture <laughs> instead of just a personal hobby. Yeah, because that's the hard part, right? That is the hard part. Yeah. No, really. I mean, when you've yeah. got someone who's going to listen, you're ready to tell them everything. That's and right. All the secrets <laughs> of the universe can be revealed. And it's funny, and I, I point this out. If you listen to Keith, um, my clients, when they see it, like, holy crap, Keith's huge. And I go, yeah, Keith still looks like he can play linebacker at uh, Texas State. <laughs> and to hear from him that he's had to work not only really hard on this while also winning the parent lottery, but to think about, really, right? You know, as you I think right, you said yeah. maybe before, you picked your parents well. That's right. But also then thinking about how much better and sort of genetic freaks pro athletes are. Yeah. I'm pointing this out because clients will come in and they'll be like, oh, Michael Phelps does this, or... This football player is doing two a days, and look how big and muscular they are. And I go, yeah, but you're you don't have their lottery. You haven't won what they've won, and it, what they have is not something that can be obtained. You either have it or you don't. And to hear someone who's who's coming down that other side of the bell curve, 
and into that area and still to hear him say, yeah, I had to work really hard for this. And so you can imagine what these actual athletes, these pros are, are like. It's like, um, what is he, uh, the, the football player who had the regimen of like push-ups between commercials? Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Yeah, Herschel yeah, Walker. Example. He's 48 yeah. years old and he started mixed martial arts, won his first match. And he likes to say he doesn't eat it all, all day and then he just eats vegetarian food at night. Um, and he, he's ripped tons of muscle and it's not because of anything he's doing. In fact, anything he's doing, the ballet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was the ballet, was the ballet, was the push up. So, so yeah, j just segue. Yep. I mean, the, the point is, that is, is we get that a lot here about genetics and what, what can you have? And that's true. There's yeah. some freaks out there, folks. Oh, yeah. They're few and far <laughs> between, but I, I've played with them and I've, and I've coached them. Yeah. And, um, there are some out there that can just walk into a gym and just by osmosis <laughs> grow. You know how and a lot uh, of those guys are, they're not even in sports. You know, said they're like working sure, in yeah. IT. What was the guy who we had who was the Disney animator? Uh, he was here before I got here. And he would train, he would do like a, a uh, he had the like Amazonianly tall wife. Like the, she was much taller than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she yeah, was really yeah. strong too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. she, and, and he was, he would do three exercises. He was a powerlifter at one point once a week, and he was just, just built like a barrel. You know, just an enormous, <laughs> uh, just an enormous man. And if you're gonna pick your parents, yeah, I mean, he was he was that he was that guy. <laughs> oh, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we've we've had a few roll yeah. through, yeah. Uh, and they never were in sport. They didn't care to have sport. It was almost like what McGuff talks about. Hey, Doug, um, <laughs> where he says if he spends as much time on medicine. In his youth, when he was going through med school, as he did reading Nautilus books and worrying about training, then he would, he's already a great doctor, and he would be that much better. Right. Yeah. That was where his talent was, but you focus on the thing you're not good at. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Well, and an introduction to kind of quick bio of me is that uh, I kind of grew up with the Nautilus <coughs> training principles uh, being kind of the push that I had, and the Nautilus gyms were, I thought, really cool. Um, there was one in Bryan, or actually College Station, uh, Texas, for a little while. Um, and then, uh, if any of you are familiar with College Station, Texas, uh, Don Ganner, who has since passed, but he was the owner of the Dixie Chicken. Um, he, um, I think he's still capturing. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, he uh, got a crew over to our backyard one day, and we built a gym in a couple days. <laughs> and I think that all that equipment uh, at some point went to like the Franklin High School football team or something. But anyway, that was my background, and I can uh, pull up pictures of you know literally deadlifting at five years old. I just I was around it all the time, and um, I still am around it, and I'm always going to be around it. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we at Efficient Exercise get a lot of um, how do I put it the same questions over and over. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, n not harping on that they're not good questions, it's just um, I think maybe some of the concepts and some of the ideas that we have um, maybe aren't mainstream enough for some people. Um, so I just kind of wanted to throw out some of the questions that we tend to get a lot. Um, probably, uh, you know, depending on what era you're from, what, what about my cardio or what about my aerobics, aerobics being the older term, but um, I think that's a question we get a lot, you know. Uh, I don't know how you want to touch in on that, but you know, Skyler, what about my cardio? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a couple a couple of points that jump to mind that I that I discuss with clients. I say we've we've come to utilize the terms as Mark was mentioning, aerobics and cardio as if they were one and the same, as if they were inseparable. And um, it's important to point out that that they're not. That aerobics is typically shorthand what people mean, and even if they don't understand that this is what they're meaning, they're referring to the aerobic metabolism. Um, and doing cardiovascular work is meant to not uh, not necessarily exhaust the muscles, although that's more popular now with high intensity interval yeah. training. But it was meant to be something of oftentimes put yourself in your heart fat burning zone or your target heart rate, and yeah. you are going to, um, in a short order, you know, two to three minutes, you are going to eventually get into the aerobic metabolism, and that relies mostly on uh, the action of the heart and lungs to power to the or the oxygen pathway using this oxygen to create new energy to keep you going. And the assumption is that if you do this for a long enough period of time, your lungs get better at gas exchange, uh, the ejection rate of your heart improves, it, it remodels slightly, um, your vascular system compensates. So touching back on the first part, I said the aerobic metabolism is just that. It's, it's, a, it's a component of your 
body's mechanism for making ATP, muscle currency, right? So right, if we wanted to start exercising the first 10-ish seconds, depending on the person and their reserves, that's done by ATP. That's your ready-to-go power juice in the muscle. And then after that, your body starts taking the glucose in the muscles, and it starts converting it down into pyruvate, which the cells use to create more ATP. That's glycolysis. Then it goes through the Krebs cycle, and then it goes to the electron transport chain, which is aerobics, and in the truest sense of the word. Um, McGuff talks about this. I think we he went. If you look on our website, you can even see McGuff right. talking about aerobics mm -hmm. and discussing this whole thing in longer term. But the point I'm making is that you don't, you you can't separate your muscles from this process. Your heart, your lungs serve the muscles. Um, and now, if you're sedentary, for instance, and the only thing you did was us once a week, your heart and your lungs would be better off. We might encourage you to get off your hump, you know, and and move a little bit. Um, your brain would like it, your vascular system would like it. But you don't need to do traditional cardio. Um, the fat burning zone really is a myth. You, 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 you're, if you've got glucose available, you're going to use that. Um, only unless you're fasted. I mean, and, and really being fasted eight hours after sleep is not enough to get at that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the extent of it. What about your cardio? If you're working out hard enough in here, your heart and your lungs are going to benefit uh, immensely because they serve the muscles and the muscles are going to place demands on them. Yeah, and a couple of points that always come to my mind. One is that uh, it was really just about um, getting the heart rate up. There's a lot of ways to do that that are unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, speed, cocaine, I mean, there, there, <laughs> there are ways to, to get, get your heart rate up. You're and, a cooker. Yeah, and, and people, people, so I mean, when I throw that at people, it kind of gets them thinking, oh yeah, I guess it's not just about getting my heart rate up. But Keith, what about, I think I've heard you say this, um, after you walk out the door from an efficient exercise workout, you're doing cardio. Maybe you explain are, yeah. that a little bit. Absolutely you are. You, uh, your body is um, fighting to recover from that workout, to put it in layman's terms, because I am a political science major, folks, so science is, <laughs> okay, I can read it and understand it, but I like to put stuff in real-world terms, okay? Your body is fighting uh, to, to regain center ground, um, which means... You have what is called a uh, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. So basically, you're doing your aerobics when you're on your drive home, whenever you come back, as you're recovering. Um, and to look at it another way, I think the uh, the Tabata studies pretty much shot holes in all the uh, all the old aerobics mm -hmm. theories. Okay, mm -hmm. um, if anybody's interested um, to read more about that, you can just uh, Google Tabata. Um, the basic Tabata is um, 20 seconds on, very high intensity, 10 seconds off, keep rotating through, 20 on, 10 off, 20 on, 10 off, for four minutes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like much at all. Doesn't say, sounds like a piece of cake. I guarantee it. Try it one time. <laughs> Try it once. And the interesting thing about that is, let's say we're doing uh, sprints for our 20 seconds on. The interesting thing that the Tabata study showed was that not only did the athletes get better at that particular sprint, so they got faster, but their uh, their uh, endurance capacity also increased without doing any endurance work. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So you can get better in that pathway by doing a HIT, uh, high intensity interval training type of workout, the kind of workouts we advocate doing here. Oh, yeah. um, and I can tell you personally that I abhor, abhor, doing any kind of distance work. <laughs> I am not, I'm not built yeah, for distance. Yeah. I'm a person that 400 meters, that's distance work for me. Mm -hmm. But I can do these type of workouts, still get on my bike, and hang with people who do do that type of mm -hmm. endurance work. Um, mm -hmm. Now, specifically, I'm not adapted to that. And there is a sports-specific adaptation that takes place for doing that kind of, that kind of mm -hmm. work, whether it's running, biking. But I can hang with those people pretty dang good for somebody who never does endurance work. Mm -hmm. And it's all because I do this type of workout, high mm -hmm. intensity interval training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah you, you, you actually drawn up something important. That it's not that we're discouraging. Um, we live in Austin, the epicenter of physical culture. And at any point in the day, you can go out on our nearest highway over here, 360, and you're going to find people cranking around on bicycles looking sponsored. And some of them are fast enough to where they actually are sponsored. Yeah. Um, or you have people running down at Town Lake, or, uh, I mean, you just got a whole host of people. There are some people who are doing that because they feel they have to do it for exercise. 
and to train their heart and lungs. And our point in saying this is that <clears throat> it, that's not necessary. But we have plenty of clients who like to do it. My wife, she loves uh, distance running. She's run five marathons in five states. Um, and she now she's actually uh, coincidentally not talking about abhorring, uh, abhorring distance. You have some people who just get tired of it. I mean, she's, she wants to run uh, some shorter distance, focus on speed, uh, just to change it up a little bit. Uh, if you like doing that, neither of us do. Or none, none, <laughs> of us do. none of us do. None of us do. None of us do. Um, more power to you. More power to you. Great. And great. <laughs> What we're saying is that if you like to do that, this is going to help you do less of it and really get quality miles out of it. And if you don't like doing it for the, your health, you don't need it. It's not necessary. No, no. Yeah, so I guess that ties into is one hour per week of what we'll call for now high-intensity training enough. What, should, what are your goals? And that's that, you know, it comes down to, well, it depends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you are, say, training for some sort of a uh, biking event, well, you're going to have to spend time on your bike and that's a skill acquisition and it's taking any strength you've built here and putting it into that sport. But as far as building strength for living, uh, building the capacity in your cardiovascular system for the demands of daily life and getting stronger overall, so anything you encounter in your daily life, which is a lot of the, my clients, yeah. uh, 50 plus women and uh, some former weekend warrior types, uh, then it's all you you can totally you can get by and then some you got to hit it when you're here mm -hmm. you got to make it count you know you leave here looking like something happened pardon the pun yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. that's right you got to be efficient yeah um yeah. but yeah you, that's absolute you can mm -hmm. you can absolutely do that yeah mm -hmm. so yeah it's all about goals it's all about it's it's what you want out of the workouts um if you want to be healthy absolutely mm -hmm. but let, let's remember too that they're where sporting prowess begins, you leave health behind. And that, that's just that's the way point. it is. If you want to be a good athlete, and if you want to excel in athletics, you're going to have to leave the health aspect behind for a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. so, um, so for general health and fitness, let's call it 90% of the population, it is enough. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the tricky part is that, is that effort. It's not, we're not saying vomit-inducing effort. Um, sort of like the old Nautilus. That's happened. That's like, happened. Yeah. I mean, I, I can think of two or three times yeah, I vomited. Yeah. And the first time I was really excited. My mom's a poor. And I'm going, I, I've done it. Arthur Jones is proud. You know, he didn't give a name about me. But Arthur Jones is proud. Um, but it's not necessary. But the point is, is that you should be able to, to push yourself and really make count. And if you're only going to, you, you, can, you can train the muscles with effort. You can train the muscles with weight. You can train it with volume. You pick your poison; they all will work, and then you judge what are what can what do I have time for? And if you're in here only, you got an hour, mm -hmm. and your personality is such that you hate spending tons of time in the gym. You come in, you hit it hard, and yeah. and recover, and come back and better the next time. Yeah, and that's all part of the learning curve too, because it it's um, not many people can tune into that right off. I mean, yeah. it takes a yeah. little it's a little bit of an on ramp mm -hmm. to learn how to uh, to turn on those afterburners when you're in here and really push. Yeah, so right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and, and, I, and I think that um, you know this this training concept or how much time gets adapted in so many different ways. And I think we alluded to the fact that athletes oftentimes will train longer. Um, I guess one of the more current or um, slightly current at this time uh, news events was the Iowa football training incident. Mm -hmm. um, Keith, what do you think about? Was that necessary? What, as a strength and conditioning coach, was this guy thinking? Uh, just kind of yeah. talk through that a little bit. Okay, okay. so when I, when I first read this story, and, and to, uh, to just And we'll link it up with this in case people want to read more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the, the uh, football players at Iowa came back off their, uh, I guess it was a winter break, mm -hmm. came back off of a winter break, and uh, they hit their first um, conditioning workout. Um, which are notoriously hard, and I can tell you from personal experience that they, they are difficult. Those first workouts out of the shoot are difficult. Now, when I first read this story, what happened was uh, 12 of the players ran, uh, wound up with uh, rhabdomyolysis. Uh, basically, that's a breakdown of muscle protein that your uh, kidneys can't handle, and that winds up spilling into the urine. Um, your urine ends like up being tea. a very dark color, <laughs> and it's yeah. very disconcerting, and, it, and it's it's a, a threatening condition. Um, so anyway, 12 of these players 
after this uh, after this initial workout uh, came down with rhabdo. Now, initially, when I read this story, I said, I can't believe, you know, this is no way to train, no way to train an athlete. I can't believe, you know, what's his strength and conditioning coach thinking, you know, it's just crazy. Um, and, it, and I went on and on and on. But that, then I sat back and I thought about it and I thought, well, you know, these initial workouts aren't meant to make the athlete better. What they're meant to do is uh, they're a litmus test. And getting back to health and athletic prowess, they're not trying to make the athlete better. They're trying to cull the herd. <laughs> and essentially, they want to find out who's in, who's not in, who mm -hmm. is going to lay it on the line, who is going to push and push and push. They're not trying to make the athlete better at this point. This is, this is purely to find the people who are going to stay with the program. And, and it's, a, it's also a team-building thing. It's not unlike special forces training to where that's not meant to make that person a better, better special forces yeah. mm -hmm. um, soldier. Now, now and, and I might be getting the numbers wrong, was it a set of 100 squats with their body weight? Or yeah, it was, or uh, yeah, it was uh, I can't remember. unreal volume. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, was yeah. an incredible, incredible amount of volume. Yeah. Um, so, so, thing yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, hey, Doug, if you're watching this, yeah. um, so could that have been done with a, let's call it a 20 rep set instead of a, you know, a hundred or 200 sure. rep, I don't and remember it, what they did, but, yeah. and, and it comes down, and, and later in the program, I'm sure, I don't know the strength and conditioning coach personally, but, I, you know, he's, he's at that level, I'm sure he's pretty bright, and again, this was not meant to make a better athlete, this was meant to, are you in, or are you out? Yeah. And that was all it was meant to do. And these, there's a lot of other things that go into this as well. You, you've got that first, it, okay, so these kids have been off since, say, December. They've been out. They've been back home. They're 18 to 22 years old. They're kind of the big shots in their hometowns. They come back. They've been partying the whole time they've been gone. I think Iowa went to a bowl. Sorry, in-laws, I can't remember what, <laughs> which bowl they went to, but I think they went to a bowl. But anyway, yeah. yeah. So in, in They've been off quite as long as sure. my point, yeah. And they've had some some problems within the team. They've had, you know, I don't keep up with Iowa a whole lot, but this is just from what I've read. Maybe they had some internal strife. Mm -hmm. They had to clean house. And and I can tell you, being a former player, when you go away for break, whether it's summer or over the winter, you are given explicit instructions. This is what kind of shape you need to be in when you get back. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to be expected of you when you get back. Nobody ever does. It. <laughs> You're talking 18 to 23 years old. They, they go have home. Other priorities. They're bulletproof, <laughs> they, and they are. Yeah. They're bulletproof at that point. They know. Yeah, I can suffer through. I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. only that, I, I don't know what kind of drink specials were going on, but I can tell you this as well. <laughs> Everybody thinks these athletes are just are, are health conscious. They're not. Yeah. They're athletes. Yeah. They're gifted athletes, and they're 18 That's to 23 point. years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. They were probably out half the night drinking. I'm not pointing any fingers, but I know what I did when I was that age. Come back right off of doing that three hours of sleep and go right into a, a full pads practice and think nothing other of it other than I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. But I can suffer through to recover to go out tonight. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, that, yeah. and so all of these things add up. Super hard workout. All of this other stuff that, meant to, that might have gone on. The fact that this workout is not meant to make you better, but to cut you. Um, so all of these things add up. And 12 kids, unfortunately, it's an unfortunate thing. Mm. But it does happen. It's not unusual. Um, you know, I think I told you, if I, if I would have raised a white flag every time I urinated and, you know, it was the color of tea, I would have been out a long time ago. It happens. Yeah. It does happen. It, it, I wonder if... Um, it's not know, healthy. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. Well, but, but athlete doesn't equal health. That's, 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 that's a health. paradigm that's a we have yeah. to make sure we're. Yeah, I mean, if I hear one more time someone reference Michael Phelps as some sort of like beacon of, you know, I want to look at his body and and how amazing he is, and sort of we say, okay, well, at that level, you you've self selected for the sport. Sure. Yeah. Um, one and two, people like to say it's like eight thousand calories a day, and he's got a team of nutritionists and doctors and people watching his blood work and his body fat, yeah. and he's an amateur athlete by status, but. You'd have no idea by how, how popular he is. If something was going wrong about the way he was eating, he wouldn't be eating that way anymore. That would have been cold very quickly. But I wonder if this is similar to the Jay Cutler incidents or perhaps built into it where 
football has seems to have a, a culture of shame, or at least shaming individuals who, you know what, that uh, that knee of mine hurts and I should take oh, time yeah. off. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, um, yeah. It, um, and I wonder if that maybe played into it. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, there was definitely a... Uh, and I can remember going through going through drills and uh, there being a lot of taunting. Um, mm. um, you know, you're ready yeah. to bow out, you're ready to get out, you know, you whip. And that's all part of the team building thing. Same thing, special forces. Yeah. It's all all part to make, all meant to make you better psychologically, mm -hmm. mentally, buying into the program, all of these types of things. It's not meant to make you a mm -hmm. better it, it's physical a, athlete. It's a weed out process. It is a weed yeah. out process. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, when I was growing up in Arizona, I think it was Mesa High School. Uh, they had what they called the pink belly scandal, where they would have kids run through a gauntlet of their peers with their shirt off, and everyone would take turns slapping their stomach. They call it pink belly, and it was meant to be like a weeding out, toughening process. Sure, yeah. But they basically, so that's child abuse, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, however many, you know, however many, never mind the number of men on the field. I mean, football players, football teams are what fifty deep. I mean, how? Sure. Yeah. So you got a lot of guys taking their palms, you know, in in the summer heat of Arizona and just slapping yeah. this yeah. these kids' stomach, and yeah, it's bad news. And oh, it's team building, and it makes them tough. You know? Well, they used to say, "Don't drink water; it makes you tough." Yeah. yeah. In athletics, sure. you know, and Art Devaney talks about this too when he was in minor league baseball back in I think the fifties. It was. It, it just changes. Whatever makes you tough changes. And, it, and later we find out that's probably not the best idea. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, what I, you got to weed people out, you gotta, unfortunately. you got to get past the mindset of, of thinking the better the better the athlete, the more healthy. And yeah. it just does not work. They, it, they've survived. They've, <laughs> yeah. they, they've survived. Yeah. Um, it's a yeah. survival bio. And, yeah. two, they're like thoroughbreds. They're right on the, okay, so you build them up to they're right on the brink. They're they're high performance cars. They're yeah. one slip away from from mm -hmm. blowing apart, that's and that's true. how they that's how they, and that's how they have to operate. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're playing at that level, again, health is health is way way. Yeah, my my I have a I have a cardiologist who talks about the runners like that. You know, they won't true. show any signs until they have a heart attack. That's so, it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah, and there's been incidents of that plenty of times true. with a marathon runner collapses, dies. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we, we started with. Uh, Two days a week, and we got into that. Um, so, so the the question is, if you want to pursue athletics, is two times lifting two times a week enough? That that's one question I get, mm -hmm. and then the question becomes, well, what is your sport? Okay, it depends. You know, if you're if you're running, is two times a week lifting plenty? Yeah, yeah. Most of your time in sport has to be spent in sport specific activities and training yeah. skills training all of that <clears throat> mm -hmm. weightlifting is just an augment to make you better at your skills but you have to practice your skills so yeah. that's, now if you, are you talking olympic weightlifting or powerlifting where weightlifting is your sport yeah, yeah that's two days a week and yeah. i mean so you have to you have to be able to uh, quantify the question a little bit mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. of course not i mean that's your sport you know you better be in there six days a week you're hitting it i mean it's just the way it mm -hmm. is uh, for health purposes, uh, yeah. two times a week, and you're golden. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, um, I know the New York Times <clears throat> had a article uh, just a couple of days ago, maybe it was even yesterday, about um, vibration plate technology, um, thoughts, feelings on on some of that. Uh, is it just another gimmick? What what you know? What what is that? Well, uh, they kind of uh, there there seem to be that it produces people can run a little faster, they can jump a little higher. Basically, they had these people to stand or do a whole push-up position on the plate. Um, and they're not exactly sure of the mechanism. They seem sort of like, well, it could be this. No. And, and that, that seems to be um, the, the role of sports science of exercise physiology is, is a coach will figure out something works. Mm. And then years and years and years later, the sports scientists figure out exactly why it works. Um, you got a lot of ways of doing this. I know Bill D. Simone likes the body blades and other sort of apparatuses that cause imbalance so because in the studies you look at them and they seem to improve strength they seem to improve the 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 action of the deep stabilizing muscles of the joint not the superficial like biceps forearms etc um and they seem to uh improve blood flow to the joint which it sounds like a good thing over the long over the course of my life and the life of my joints if i can keep them lubricated sufficiently lubricated 
Um, because, you know, lifting is like pulling a rope over mm -hmm. a rock. Mm -hmm. they, they eventually, these joints are going to wear out the connective tissue, so you want it to be as supple as possible. And I guess the other question is, is that any better than doing a heavy hold mm. or uh, doing ballistics, um, some type of ballistic movement prior to a prior to a lift, say uh, ballistic push-ups just prior to doing floor presses, um, mm -hmm. jumps, uh, vertical jumps just prior to doing uh, deadlifts or squats. Is that any, that would be interesting to see. That would be interesting to see a study side by side, vibration plate versus uh, doing these other things and see, you know. It, and it could be one of those, <clears throat> it all depends. You it know? all depends. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah. um, Go ahead. Right, power athletes could use post activation potentiation. That would be plyometrics sure. or or heavy holds or mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if maybe there's some of that, some of the vibratory effort that because when you're catching on something that's that's plyometric, you, there's sure. a shock in a sure. in a catch, and I wonder if if that's getting some of that vibration component, and that might be the overlap, the uh, the Venn diagram of. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very interesting, um, and, and and also this kind of ties in. I wonder. Um, uh, Jay Schroeder's type of protocols where uh, he's in an extended, uh, he's in a stretch, in a, a prolonged stretch. Um, and I can't uh, remember for the life of me what he calls that protocol exactly, but it would be, say, uh, get in a deep push-up position and hold that for up to five minutes. Wow. That kind of thing. Um, so you've got... Uh, this, is, this is in warm-up or after? Th this is for the protocol itself. This is for oh, the workout oh, it's itself. Just, it's and, and you're now, loaded in that stretch? It, actually, you're... So you're in a deep push-up position and you're actually pulling back. So you're pulling yourself oh. into that position. Interesting. Um, and I can't remember what he... Uh, Yoga? <laughs> not exactly. No, it's a little bit... Well, and, and yoga may, yeah, may yeah. Uh, do uh, some of the same... same if, if you held that pose for mm -hmm. that long. Mm -hmm. um, his claim is what's going on there is that you have a rapid fire and release, mm -hmm. continual fire and release, which sounds a lot like explosive lifting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in it. In this uh, strength and conditioning, I mean, we're just in the infancy here. There's a lot, a lot we don't know, a lot we're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in really when you get into the central nervous system's interplay, with it, I mean, it's very, very interesting, and there's a lot, a lot, and I would imagine the uh, the vibration plate has a lot to do with the mm -hmm. uh, CNS activation yeah. and excitation. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. that's the new frontier. Yeah, and in a, I mean, I, I another thing I liked, and, and I've heard this analogy for Keith use it. I've heard it, uh, you know, a few times is that, you know, uh, training and programming, it, it's somewhat like uh, you know, you, you know, toolbox or tool belt, and you want to be able to pull from, from sure. different. Uh, so I don't know. You know, maybe one question is why is it important for people to seek out um, people that know something about <laughs> the tool chest? Uh, I mean, what I mean, what do you think? Um, well, it's um, it reminds me of it's like a, but there's there's more than there there are many paths up the mountain. Choose one, and we're in a fortunate position that we don't we we can dabble in the choice. We can see we can adapt. It's like uh, the saying: the doctor treats the patient, not the symptoms, mm -hmm. we're kind of in a similar boat. If you have all of these modalities at your disposal, unless you have an ideological or political affiliation with a modality, which yeah. some people do. Some people say only yeah. barbells, d damn anything else, or only yeah. Nautilus machines, or only yeah. this, and really it's, <clears throat> well, it depends. Does it yeah. work? Who does it, who are you training? Who, what are their yeah. needs? And, yeah. and I mean, and I think yeah. sometimes like Nautilus, for example, it's like, it's just like the Corvette guys are not going to drive a Mustang. It's just, <laughs> it's just because that's, that's what they, they want. And they right. love the old Nautilus stuff. Well, yeah. great. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, great. yeah, I mean, I often say you can do it with a rusty barbell, but you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of tools at our disposal. So right. um, I mean, that's, we that's, choose to yeah. use them. Right? And for a, for a person outside of the circle who doesn't spend their every waking moment, like we do, looking at this stuff, yeah. dealing with it, reading about it, just because we're geeks like that, we, <laughs> that's what we do. Well, they are. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's actually running the business that allows us to be geeks like that. Uh, no. <laughs> so if you're in the outside looking in, this is hugely, hugely overwhelming. Yeah. So that you... Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, latch on to something it is, because it's, sure, it's yeah. right, it's, a, it's, it's your lighthouse. I mean, if you if you... If you look at the message boards, there's so much disinformation out there, and, and a lot of people just getting into this 
the physical culture scene, they don't know where to turn, and you're not really sure. You need you need somebody that's been in a while that knows what's going on to help you navigate no. around some of those obstacles you get in because there's a bunch, and you can waste so much time trying to fight through this yourself. So maybe, maybe we should make that the first topic of the next uh, of the next EETV where we there discuss. We go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Well, it's yeah, that. exactly yeah. kind of a filter process. I mean, I even use you two as filters because there's so much information out there. Sure. And, you know, you, you have to have some kind of filter process. Sure. And then we're here as filters for, uh, you know, the public seeking yeah. seeking that advice. So. You know, and I mean, I, I say to my clients, I say, you know, you all are getting the, the benefits of my selfish desire to have more information mm -hmm. and, and just mm -hmm. to continually learn. Yeah. And, and really, that's that's a sign if you of a good trainer. You got someone who's continually trying to gobble up new information and sure. integrate it into your program. Even if, even if they try it once, they go, well, that was... That's not necessary, or that's yeah. not for my clients. Then, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, we're as Keithy's is the n equals one uh, experiment. We always mm -hmm. are experimenting and trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's the best and tweak this or that. Um, and someone should benefit from my thirty years of n equals one failures. <laughs> so don't yeah, don't yeah. repeat the same mistakes yeah. that I have. That's okay. right. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's how we learn. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I guess that's all for now. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Skylar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll come back. We'll do more of this EETV. And thank you for watching. Awesome.